the Paradise Paradox. My name's Kurt Robinson. So today, date is 23rd, Friday, 23rd of October, 2015. There's a hurricane approaching here in Guadalajara uh, off the coast coming in. Reputedly, it's the, the most powerful hurricane in, the, in all of recorded history. It's a Category 5 hurricane coming off the coast there, uh, like the coast right near me, like three or four hours away in Puerto Vallarta and uh, Manzanillo. And um, I'm not too worried about it. I mean, it's like 250 kilometers away, three, four hours away. So uh, by by bus anyway. And so not, not too much of a worry. It's just, I mean, I, I didn't even realize that there was a hurricane coming. I just noticed it was raining. And it's not doesn't seem to be particularly raining any more than it usually does when it rains. So there's everything seems fine for the moment. Everything appears nominal. But I was just chilling, just relaxing, kicking back, thinking about liberty, because that's what I do. I'm obsessed. And and uh it's a common um common subject that, that comes up when People posting things on on Facebook, or you know, recently, of of course, there was another mass shooting in the United States, and, and they just they just keep coming, uh, and you know, I, I I would make that argument that a lot of them are engineered, and people come out and say that you can look up on Facebook on on uh, YouTube rather, and uh, look at the all the evidence that people have compiled in this. Uh, like some people will call it conspiracy theories, but other people will call it investigative journalism, which is probably, uh, well, both titles are probably pretty accurate. Um, but that's uh, the thing is, it gives it gives people fodder to say we need to take get rid of the guns, uh, and people look at Australia and say Australia hasn't had a mass shooting. Or you know mass mass shooting event since 1996. Uh, of course, it's not entirely accurate. Everybody forgets Monash, uh, the the incident at Monash University in which a, a foreign student came in with a couple of firearms and shot a few people. Uh, I guess it doesn't register because it, it was only I think it was. I believe it was one person that died and a few were injured. So maybe it doesn't count as a mass shooting. I guess, I guess that's why. Uh, but the thing is, the thing is, uh, if you compare Australia and New Zealand, Australia and New Zealand actually had very similar gun laws until 1996. In 1996, it was a Port, Port Arthur massacre, uh, which again is another very suspicious very suspicious uh, activity going on where there was, for some reason, there was a lot of uh, Americans, a lot of intelligence agents in Australia, and they had, they apparently had to uh, bamboozle the, the bamboozle Martin Bryant into admitting to to the to the shooting. Uh, and the guy had an IQ of like 70 and he just, uh, according to the reports, he just came in and shooting off the hip, making all kinds of headshots. And, you know, if you play Counter-Strike uh, once in your life, you probably realize it's it's not quite that simple. So, uh, so, so that was the whole thing. But after that event, they, they cracked down on guns in Australia. There was a forced buyback. Uh, and lots of lots of guns. Um, I think upwards of one million firearms were actually. Uh, uh, how can I say it? They were taken possession of by the federal government, and I believe they were destroyed. Of course, it doesn't change the fact that actually there are still millions and millions of firearms in Australia that that were unregistered uh, black market arms. Um, and probably a lot more today than there were in 1996. So they only got like a small percentage of, of the total firearms in Australia, maybe like around 19%. But uh, but people claim this is a causal thing, like, oh, well, look at now, look at the, the, the deaths, look at the murders, they've gone down. Yeah, well, just like they've gone down in every other 
country in the developed world. I mean, over time, people become more civilized and that doesn't have anything to do with whether they're packing or not. Um, and you have this very close comparison. Of course, there's never such a thing as all things being equal when you're talking about economics or social sciences. Uh, but you can compare Australia and New Zealand and that very similar culturally, they had very similar laws. And what happened... And also they had very similar rates of mass shootings. And what happened after 1996, the same, it's the same decline. It's like the, the, the rate of decline was very similar. Actually, you could even make the case that it, it was worse in Australia because that, uh, in Australia there was the more mass shooting, but, um, but uh, New Zealand didn't have any similar shooting. Uh, so that's, that's one argument which people make, which is total nonsense <laughs> this, this, there's so many things that people say and it gets me so fired up because I'm like no this is you're, you're making this illogical argument you're, how, you, you're telling these half truths and all kinds of things and another thing is like with leftists sometimes when I, when I talk with leftists and I don't know if this might just be my own experience but I, I think this is a common thing um, they have this Cognitive dissonance is double think. So, for example, I, it's it's happened to me more than once that I've been talking to a leftist, and they're talking about gun control, gun control. Like we need to limit the guns, we need to take away the tools of injuring people. And then in the same conversation, I kid you not, same conversation, they call for a revolution, and I'd just be gobsmacked, like. You okay? So you're calling for a revolution, but you you want to revolt against this government. You want to revolt against this government, but at the same time, you want the same government to take all of your guns. So so they're they're simultaneously your enemy and your friend. Like you 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 trust them to be the only ones with firearms in the in the entire society, or you know the only the only ones who can carry firearms publicly, or whatever it is. You trust them to do that. But at the same time, you want to revolt against them. You want to destroy them. You want to get rid of this entire government and start a new one. And they, the, for some reason, unable to recognize the huge disparity of ideas there. Or, you know, they said, uh, I remember I was having this conversation with a girl from, from my old job and uh, and and... I can say to, say to these people sometimes, like, hey, um, do you know actually why in the United States it's included in the Constitution, why the founding fathers of, of the United States federal government actually included the right to bear arms in, in the, the Bill of Rights? And, and they're like, uh, I don't know, it's just like something to do with hunting. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, it's because... Governments are evil. Governments do bad things. Governments get out of control, and you constantly need to keep them in check. If you if you if you have a government, I mean, I prefer to not have one. But if you do have one, you need to watch out because you like just look in the last twentieth century. We've, we've got like Pol Pot, the Khmer Rouge, Stalin, Hitler, uh, and and you know that's just. You know, that's like just for, just for starters. We can go through and there's, there's like hundreds of millions of people who have died at the hands of their own government just in the 20th century, and that's nuts, man. It's it's like it's uh, even it's unfathomable. It's just a, like a statistic. Um, but in the you know, and the same in the same conversation, someone will tell me, eh, I don't really go into those conspiracy theories but I, I i remember i wrote this rhyme once they they call it a conspiracy they they call it a theory of conspiracy but it happens consistently if you look through history it's just a fact it's a historical trend that governments kill people uh and a lot of the time they'll do it indiscriminately um now it's also i um, at a more basic level it's about morality. And I know this sounds weird to a lot of people when I say actually allowing people to have guns 
is a moral action. It's actually a moral imperative to leave people alone, to not steal their guns. Because a, a lot of people uh, on the left will say, no, it's a moral imperative to, to take guns away from people. Uh, I don't agree. And I'll tell you why. So the, the maxim of law is the burden of proof lies on him who claims, not on him who denies. So if someone accuses you of something, they have to produce the evidence. So that's where we get the, the, the more common expression in the, in, the, in the common vernacular, which is guilty, sorry, not guilty until proven innocent. Innocent until proven guilty. Innocent until proven guilty because the, the burden of proof is on someone to, to demonstrate that you're guilty. So the, the null hypothesis, the assumption, is that you're innocent. And, and that makes perfect sense. And everybody would want that in their corner if they're being accused of something. They would want people to assume or to assume the, the null hypothesis that they're actually innocent rather than assuming that because they're being accused, they're, they're, actually, they're, they're actually guilty of something. And that's, the, that's something foundational in justice. Uh, so the thing is, it's it's unjust to punish an innocent. And that's kind of the definition of justice, almost. I mean, I think that uh, my definition of justice is, uh, well, one traditional definition of justice is to each what he deserves. And my definition of justice would be the guilty are punished or rehabilitated or, or, or they have to pay reparations. The injured are, are compensated if, if your things are damaged or if your person is injured or if, if uh, a, a member of your family is, is killed, then you have to be compensated to some extent. Uh, and lastly, of course, that the innocent are left alone. If you go around harassing innocents, then... then that cannot produce justice because that is that is the opposite of justice. But I, I, I go on to elaborate. What is, what is an innocent? An innocent is someone who hasn't harmed anyone, interfered with another's property against their will, nor defrauded anyone in an agreement. So it hasn't hasn't behaved fraudulently. Uh, now, if you believe in government, you might have a different definition of justice. You might think the definition of justice is do what I say or do what the government says. And that would mean that an innocent is someone who hasn't violated any, any government decrees. But if you think about this for like five seconds, it doesn't take long. You just need to pick it apart a little bit. You can, you can see very quickly that that is a very, very bad definition of justice, a very impractical one. And one that allows a lot of abuses of power. Because if, if your definition of justice is that someone should be punished if they don't do what a, an elite group or a particular dictator says, then uh, someone can command you to kill someone just because of the, you know, the color of the skin, the, the kind of uh, apparel that they're wearing, like with, with Pol Pot when he murdered, he ordered them the extermination of thousands of people because they were wearing glasses. Uh, they, can, they can command you to do that. And if your definition of justice is that you have to obey their orders or it's unjust for you to disobey them, then you're caught in the, this particular, this peculiar position of having to kill someone or having to kill someone who hasn't done anything wrong to anybody or ad admitting injustice, uh, which, is, which is a terrible position to be in. And that's the, that's the philosophical position that, that this definition puts you in. Now... Many people get uncomfortable when you start to question the law. Uh, they, they think that once you get the thin end of the wedge in and say, well, hang on, 
this you know this law maybe we don't have to obey this or maybe this law doesn't doesn't really count maybe it's not a moral imperative to obey the law they'll they'll get uncomfortable and they'll start to say stuff like well that just sounds like anarchy and of course when i ask them well what do you mean what is anarchy of course they don't know they have no idea but they know that that uh, if you question the law, it leads to anarchy. That, that's uh, somehow something that's uh, that's been into a, a lot of people, especially English speakers. Uh, but the reason they think that it be- is because they are very, very ignorant of the law. So ignorant that they don't even know the the basic principle, which is the difference between malum in sang and malum prohibitum. So malum in se and malum prohibitum are two types of law. Malum in se means wrong of itself. A malum prohibitum means wrong because we say so or wrong because it's prohibited. So laws that are malum in se are things like uh, assault or theft or fraud. Um, things that uh, any reasonable person would recognize as wrong, as immoral. Uh, so, so injuring someone... Uh, stealing something, killing someone, uh, and anybody would recognize those things as immoral. And in a, a court of common law, with no legislation, with absolutely no legislation, people who injure others or assault others would still be punished or forced to pay reparations or whatever, depending on the particular form of justice. Uh, you don't need legislation for that to happen. But malum prohibitum means that it's it's just a declaration. So you could say that it's 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 illegal or you know it's it's wrong not to kill someone when I say you need to kill someone. Or you could say that it, you know that's an extreme example. Um, but you could also say it's wrong not to it's it, it's wrong if you exceed 100 kilometers per hour on this particular stretch of road. And that's just it's it's not necessarily backed up by science. Uh, it's it's not necessarily carefully researched. It's not necessarily evidence based. It's just a declaration. So it it might have science behind it, but it doesn't have to, and it doesn't have a victim. It doesn't have a direct victim. Malum in se laws that are mala in se they always have a victim, a direct causal victim. Laws that are malum prohibitum. Uh, almost never have a, a direct causal victim uh, because they don't they don't need a, a direct causal victim because it's just it's just if you do this thing then it doesn't matter if someone is injured you will still be punished and now some some people will say to me things like oh well I would argue that uh, speeding like going over hundred kilometers an hour actually does have a victim and. My question is, does it have a direct causal victim? Like, if you're just going 100 kilometers an hour and you don't run into somebody, is there, is there a victim? And obviously there isn't a victim. There's a, just some kind of weird, again, this, this double thing that people, people get so clouded in the thoughts are unable to actually distinguish uh, whether there's a victim or not. Uh, or they, t- they try to make the argument to me that if, if I have a gun in a safe in my home, locked up, then I'm somehow responsible for someone on the other side of the country, on the other side of the town, shooting another person. And, and you have to look at this causal relationship. Like whether I have, if I, if I have the gun or if I don't have the gun, if I have an empty safe or if I don't, if I don't have any weapons in my house at all, does that actually stop this mass shooting on the other side of town, on the other side of the country? And it would be very, <laughs> very difficult for you to make the argument that somehow me possessing a, a safe with a weapon in it caused directly or even indirectly the mass shooting of somebody on the other side of the country. That's, that is a very, very difficult philosophical position to assume so <laughs> one must be vigilant in in one's thoughts now so the, so the thing is it's, it's this great trick because you know the people saying it's the law 
it's the law. We have to do this because it's the law. But hold on. Not all laws are equal. Some laws are mal and prohibit them, and some laws are mal, mal and insane. Uh, just because it's the law doesn't, doesn't make it good, doesn't make it right doesn't mean that somebody is affected. If a law says that you have to stand on your, on your left foot and jump up and down and whistle Dixie out your asshole for five hours a day, that doesn't make it right. And just because you get rid of all the mala, mala prohibita laws doesn't lead to chaos, which I think is what people are referring to when they say anarchy. So this is... These are, you know, these are some basic, 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 important distinctions that you have to think about when you're discussing law. And it's unfortunate that a lot of the time people will make all kinds of declarations and, and say that they advocate this and that, that law, this law. They don't even realize that when they talk about a malum prohibitum law, it's actually a threat of violence against somebody. So if you if you declare that it's it's illegal for someone to to buy a firearm without a fourteen day waiting period, uh, I, I can even ask people and I ask them, well, hold on. So you're saying you're you're going to threaten people with violence to do this? And they say no, no. They just people won't be able to to buy the firearms for fourteen days. And I'm like, hold oh, well, hold on. What are you saying? What are you really saying? Let's investigate this. Be vigilant in your thoughts. Because if I have, I, my, I open my, my gun store and, and uh, I decide to sell to people without a 14 day waiting period, what's going to happen? And they might, they, they might dodge a question and say, oh, well, you know, I just, the, 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 you wouldn't get permission. You wouldn't get a business license for that. And I would say, well, I, why do I need permission? It's my gun store. It's my my guns, my capital, my house that I'm selling them out of or wherever. Why do I need permission? What's going to happen if I don't have permission? And if the person you're talking to is intellectually honest, of course they'll say, "Well, you will be locked up or you'll be you'll be fined." And you say, well, what happens if you don't pay the fine? And, they, and it, goes, it goes on down the line. You can watch this video, George Order Help, and it talks about how people, people are so, uh, so, so, they have such a, a lack of knowledge or a lack of understanding of the law that, that when, you, when you say there ought to be a law, you're actually threatening. You're actually saying these people should be threatened by the government or by somebody. Um, so, of course, if, if they're intellectually honest, they will say, well, you know, if you, if you, if you do uh, that without permission, then you'll, you'll be locked up. And, of course, if, if you don't submit to being locked up, if you decide to run away instead, then they will probably tackle you or attack you in some other way. And if you resist arrest in that case, then, the, then you may be killed. And so this is the kind of thing when when people say there ought to be a law, when people say uh, that, that that there should be gun control, they are threatening violence. They, they're saying that people should be threatened with violence. And if you're a normal, healthy, psychologically complete individual, you probably don't want innocent, peaceful people who have harmed nobody to be attacked. You probably don't. So if you're in that position, be vigilant with your thoughts. Be careful of what you are advocating. Your words have power. Your attitudes have power. Your ideas have power. And if you let your ideas go, and be controlled by somebody else, allow your controllers to, to use your mouth to perpetuate their cycle of power of violence, then you may go down in history as a nobody, as a pawn, as somebody who never resisted. Be vigilant. Be vigilant in your thoughts. So this is, yeah, this is, a, the thing is, uh, in a lot of countries, 
people know that you shouldn't follow the law too closely. And I remember uh, I, I saw some comment on, on on Discus or something. Some some woman had said this: uh, these Mexicans they come up to California, they don't speak the language, and they just they say to themselves. We shouldn't follow the law too closely. And I say, really? They say that? Because I, w- I would like those people as neighbors. Those are my kind of people. For real. Because <laughs> some, someone who thinks enough to know that, that laws, some laws, are bullshit, is a good person. I mean it. A, a, good, a good person. I mean a morally correct person. Because if you have some blind, obedient follower... And, and someone tells them to do something, to kill somebody. And they, they say, this Nuremberg defense, I was just following orders later. And they, ki- they kill people. If you want good people, if you want to surround yourself with, with good people, intelligent people, people who will have your back, people who are willing to stand up for you in a tough situation, you want defiant, resistant people, people who don't just go along People who don't just go along to get along. People who don't just follow the rules. You deserve better than that. (laughs) You don't want a friend with a weak spine who's going to sell you out at the first opportunity. You want someone who's willing to say the magical, eloquent word. No. That beautiful, full, complete Perfect word. No. Now, yeah, so this is the thing. In, in Mexico, in, in a lot of places in the world, they don't have that kind of respect for the law. And they, and they know somewhat intuitively, like, the, the law is flexible or breakable, um, and, and it doesn't necessarily mean you're a bad person if you break the law. And and I say it's unusual, like, in, in Mexico, if somebody runs a business without buying a business license or paying their taxes, uh, nobody would ever think, oh, I guess that's a bad business. I guess they're, they're terrible. I guess they're terrible people. They would just think that person is is doing what they can to, to get by, and there's nothing wrong with that. But in Australia, if... If someone doesn't have a business license or doesn't pay their taxes, people will point their finger and say, it's you, you're the reason my taxes are so high or any kind of any number of horizontal control techniques that, that people employ. People will even dob them in to the, to the taxation department. I don't think that I, I like to think that that doesn't happen often, but I'm sure it does happen because people will. People really do think that. People think that that paying taxes is good and right and just. People think that the extortion of your neighbor is something that should be encouraged. Now, even so, even so, you can tell that people, even even in you know a state worshiping nightmare country like Australia, that. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm being harsh, but I, I mean, I love Australia, but, <laughs> but uh, I have my criticisms. So, if, even so, people will say, um, say there's a, the, there's a rule that you have to follow, or there's a rule that's in the rule book when you're getting your, your provisional license or your, or your blank license or whatever, and, and people will say, well, you know, this rule. I mean, that's, they said there's this rule, but this is just. This is extremely impractical. I mean, there's no way you could do this in practice, uh, and at least not consistently. Uh, and so what you do is you, you remember the rule for the license test. You you've checked the right box. Maybe you even make yourself look like a complete idiot trying to follow this rule while you're doing the practical element of the test. And then you forget about it. And, and people do that stuff all the time. The, the other key example is the speed limit. Because people actually don't really care that much about speed limits. Uh, what most people do and what they should do, what they're right to do, is pay attention to the conditions. 
because the conditions are a far better indicator of the speed you should be going than just a, a pole with a number on it. And that's, I mean, that should be common sense, really. It's, it sounds almost uh, condescending or, or silly to say it, that, that you, you know, as, as an intelligent human being with the brain and your skull can actually be smarter than a fucking pole with a number on it. It's obvious, right? It should be obvious. I hope it's obvious. <laughs> um, but, the, you know, I, this is, this is the, the kind of, again, this cognitive dissonance that people have. They're willing to disobey laws, but on, on the other hand, they're willing to fight tooth and nail because they, uh, in, an, in an argument because they believe that the, the laws are right and just. And they believe that if you, if you just ignore one law, then that's the whole house of cards coming down. Uh, shouldn't build your legal system on a house of cards. That's a bad idea. And this is uh, an, another quote. I forget who said it, but the, the quote goes something like, every, every man, every person to himself is an anarchist. Every person believes that to himself. Well, it's not, it's not me that needs the rules. It's those, it's those other people. It's those, those hoons. It's those idiots. They're the ones who need to be violently dominated, not me. I'm intelligent, I'm responsible, I'm reasonable. But everybody believes that to some extent. Uh, then there's a, the, other, the other quote from Larkin Rose. Uh, it came up on Facebook the other day. Um, he said, well, if you, I mean, providing first you have to get these people to, to admit that they're actually talking about threats of violence because a lot of the time they will avoid that question any way that they can. Uh, but if you can get them to admit that what they're actually advocating is threats of violence towards in innocent people, then you can ask them, how much violence is the, the exact right amount of violence against me? How, how many violent threats should be made against me? Because you're obviously saying that, that violence is a good way or threats of violence are a good way of organizing a society. So obviously it, may, it must be, if, if it's good for the society, it must be good for you and me. How much is good against me and how much is good against you? What's the exact amount of violence that you need to behave like a sensible person? And of course, nobody would admit that they need to be violently threatened. Well, actually some, some people will make that case. <laughs> uh, the... The other point is about hubris. So I've, I've seen intelligent people make this argument because in Australia, I mean, things are pretty good. Like, like I said, I have my criticism, but things are, things are pretty good in Australia. Good standard of living, low crime. I said many times that you could even walk around in Australia, like go in an ATM, pull out a couple of hundred dollars and probably walk around with it in your hand in a lot of cities and you probably won't get robbed, which is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't recommend trying it, but I, that is, that's the impression that I get. I mean, you don't even have, uh, you don't have security guards next to ATMs and, and you don't have a, a, a booth on a lot of ATMs. It's just open to the, open to the public. I mean, anyone could come along and, um, body check you and take your money, but I've never seen it happen, and, and I don't think it happens very commonly. Um, so the thing is, uh, when you live in a place like that, and and I hate to use this word because it's a, this is a word of being tainted, but the word is privilege. When you live in a place like that, you might be blissfully unaware to the conditions in the rest of the world and you might be you might be blissfully unaware that that in colombia they have this expression uh papaya partida papaya comida which means if you chop up a pawpaw and lay it out somebody's gonna take it and eat it that's, uh, that's uh, my translation. But it means that if you give someone an, op an opportunity to rob you, they're probably going to do it. 
And that's, a, that's an understanding in Colombia. Everybody says that. Everybody understands that. Everybody knows you, you have to look out for yourself and you have, you have to be careful. Uh, and, and if you're from a place like that, then, yeah, having a, a, a firearm for, for self-defense might make a lot of sense. And if, if a lot of people have firearms, well, maybe, the, maybe the, the level of crime is going to go down significantly because nobody really wants to be faced with a, with a gun in their face uh, uh, when, they, when they're trying to make a quick 20,000 pesos. So it's this, yeah, it's this kind of, it's this kind of hubris or this disconnect from reality or this, that's, and that's probably the wrong word because you, I mean, you're connected to your own reality, but the thing is you don't know what kind of positions people are in. You don't know what is best for them. Especially when you're on the other side of the world, and and certain people, even you know, intelligent people whom I respect, that will make this case and say, "Well, look at you know, look at look at Australia. Australia's fine. We've struck this this right balance with the gun laws." Uh, and then you look at the United States, and you know, they just need to do the same thing as us. But how do you know if you're not from the ghetto, if you're not from South Central LA? In a city, Chicago, how the fuck do you know what is good for somebody there? You have no idea, and I have I have no idea. But I think people should be free to choose for themselves how to look out for themselves, how to take care of themselves, because they're in a better, much better position to figure that out than I am. So. My name's Kurt Robinson. Thanks for listening. This has been the Paradise Paradox. Head on over to, to YouTube, press like, press subscribe. Head on over to Facebook, press like on Facebook. Hover over the, the like button, press get notifications. And uh, go on to Pocket Casts, Podcast Addict, iTunes. You can subscribe on all those. Leave us a review on iTunes. And uh, remember to head on over to theparadiseparadox.com. It's a great website, fun website. I, you know, we, we made it. We, we work on it every week, uh, put in some new content up there. You can go through our old stuff, and the, there's a lot of cool stuff. We talk about UFOs and Project Blue Book and, and uh, the economy and liberty and, and all sorts of crazy crap, crazy ideas for open-minded people. You'll notice there's a donate button at the top there or you can go to donate.theparadiseparadox.com. So we, we really appreciate it when, when we get uh, some tips from you. It shows us that it, it gives us a little symbol that we're doing something good and we're, we're introducing these ideas to you. So we, we appreciate that so much. Uh, head on over to donate.theparadiseparadox.com and uh, show us a little love. It's a suggested donation, one US dollar per episode that you like, but give any amount. We don't mind if it's just a couple of cents sent by Bitcoin. I mean, that's, uh, that's great, because at least, at least we know that this, this has sparked a little thought in your mind, or it's entertained you, or that, that we're doing something of value, and that, that's what we want. we want. We want to produce something that engages you, that entertains you, uh, so I hope we we succeed in doing that, uh, and you can head on over to to um, the paradiseparadox.com. You see up the top, there's a a button for Amazon, or the, it says shop Amazon. Uh, so if you want to buy something, maybe you want to buy a copy of uh, Frederic Bastien, the the Law. Uh, that that might be a good option, or some of uh, Lark and Rose's books. Uh, I. Uh, some yeah I'll, I'll put a few links in the description and uh, you can head on over and and uh, buy some of those if you're interested in hearing more about these ideas thanks so much for listening guys um, peace and love anarchy uh, and a lot of fresh juice drink that carrot juice in the morning because it's good for your eyes and uh, probably got a lot of fiber all right see you next time